use your top, use your ass. I don't care. Just wipe this damn sweat off. Sometimes I can be a bit of a germaphobe. I'm like, I cannot use that bench. We're all training from home right now, and I see this a lot on the internet. I'm part of it too. It sucks. And nobody actually wants to do it, but it's too much negativity, man. We need to find the, the positives of doing this, because it sounds like we may be doing it for a long time. Unless you live in certain states in America, when all of a sudden the dream has come true and you're allowed to go back to fitness centers, obviously health and safety first. Health and safety must come first. But what I did to try and make your home workouts a little bit more fun is I found 10 things that actually you can only do when you're working out from home. Because if you did do them in the gym, you'd probably be arrested. And I thought, hey, we can talk about that on YouTube. Hello, my name is Simon. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you can hit the subscribe button, I would appreciate it. If you can hit the like button, I would appreciate it. And I also have a patron. I make no money from YouTube. So if you want to support me that way, you can. There's a link in the description below. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316. But look, let's get into the meat and bones of this. Here's 10 awesome things you can only do when you're training at home. Or words to that effect. Number 10 is you can train shirtless. That's what you can do. I mean, some people still do this in gyms, and I look at them like, what are you doing? It's different if you go to like a hardcore gym, and you're practicing your bodybuilding poses because you're leading up to a show. That's cool. That's what the mirrors are there for. But sometimes in the middle of summer, this happened to me as well. I used to go to a very, not reputable, but very well-known chain of gyms over here in England. It may rhyme with Neasy Mim. And there used to be a bunch of guys. Oh, I lost it so bad. There was a bunch of guys in the middle of summer whipped all their tops off. And they were laying on all the benches with their sweaty, half-naked bodies. And the gym guy was just walking around like the, the, the person on call, ignoring them. And I didn't put one of my 20-kilogram plates, which hands up I should have done. And he came up to me and said, put that back, mate. I went, what about those jabronis over there? Are you not going to go over and ask them to put their shirts on? He went, no. And he walked off. Now, look, if you want to do that at home, that's great. You can preen to your heart's content. You can buy seven mirrors and just place them around your little workout area and you can flex after every workout because you know how it works. We all look better when we've got a pump on and we secretly hope and wish that one day we'll just look like that all the time, but we never do and it gets us down. But yeah, number 10, you can train shirtless and nobody's allowed to judge. Number nine is nobody stopping you from using any weights. If you watch any of my video, you know, there's nothing more annoying than that when you've got a very set plan and you want to go use the 42s, but somebody else is using the 42s and they're doing lifts like this and you're like what are you even trying to do it looks like you're trying to contain some kind of heavy machinery but you're about to lose control you know you, your weight to your weights and they're in your house and if you want to make a biggest mess ever you could also make the biggest mess ever nobody is going to tell you to put the 20 plate away when there are a bunch of half naked dudes over there now of course you should always respect every single weight room including the ones in your own home but look i'm going to say this the other day i was training from home i said like, oh man i'm in a rush for nothing in particular in terms of outside. I had a meeting on Zoom, of course, but I was like, well, I can just leave all of these plates strewn around the place and nobody can get mad. Then ironically, I got mad at myself later when I came back into my lounge and there were weights everywhere, but that's life. Number eight is there's no need for headphones. And this is a massive one for me because I am somehow able to lose headphones. Just about think about it. I think about losing my headphones and I'll like, oh, wear my headphones. I have lost them. It also means you get to choose the playlist in your own gym. Now, if you've got some kind of garage or some proper setup, you are living the dream. We're not, we're stuck in our lounges or our bedrooms or our spare rooms or whatever. But still, you can do it on your computer. You can do it on your, you know, voice powered assistant thing. Or you can just do it from your phone. You can have metal. You can have dance. You can have R&B. You can have hip hop. You don't have to be in the gym and being forced music upon thee. And in my gym, they just played that dun -dun 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 constantly, constantly, which is fine if you're trying to do cardio because you can get into a rhythm. But when you're trying to lift weights, I want Slayer. I want Metallica. I want Megadeth. I want Ultra Bridge. And I want System of a Down and bands of that ilk. And when you're training from home, you can do just that. Number seven is you can be productive during rests. Now, I don't know how much I actually agree with this because I think you should be 100% focused on your workout because if you get too distracted, you look at your watch and go, okay, I'm on a 42 minute rest set here. I think I should probably get back to it. But if you do have the discipline to ensure you're only doing things in like 30 to 45 second chunks or a minute, whatever your rest sets are, there are little things you can do. Maybe there's an email you need to send. Maybe like me, you can edit a little bit of a video. Maybe there's some correspondence you need to catch up on. I don't know. There's thousands of things that you can do in a short period of time. Because if you think about it, if you train for like an hour and 45 minutes, 
A good 20 to 25 of those may be you resting. Again, depending on what your rest sets are, you can do a lot in that time. So you can be productive and you can't do that in the gym. But again, the reason you shouldn't be doing that is because you should be focused on your workout. But look, we're living in crazy times. All the rules go out the window. If you want to reply to John about the financial situation in HMR table, there's a table there, which is the financial sector you work in, you can do it while doing a bicep curl. So you're jacked and you're doing work. Number six is you don't have to deal with people and more importantly, you don't have to deal with their sweat. How bad is that? You know what I'm talking about. We've all been there. It's a gym no-no and yet there's always one guy that does it. You go to use a bench especially and right at the top where your head is meant to go, there's just a round ball of sweat. And you can see the dude that was on this a few seconds ago and he's over there usually going, oh yeah, look at this. And you're like, man, use your top, use your ass. I don't care. Just wipe this damn sweat off. Sometimes I can be a bit of a germaphobe. I'm like, I cannot use that bench because who knows, especially at the moment, right? Who knows what kind of madness I'm going to get off that. Especially you always find that blue paper in gyms. You can move two degrees and find some blue paper. Don't get that now, mostly because there's no benches to lay on. But you don't get that now, you haven't got to worry about people sweat. Number five is you can have crap form and no one's going to come and tell you off. Now, the flip side to that is that you should you really use this time, especially if you're being forced to lift lighter weights, to work on your form, to work on your mind-muscle connection, because you'll actually find out that not only will you be stronger when you go back to the gym properly, but you may actually be able to benefit from some gains at this stage as well. But if you're worried about an exercise, or you don't know how to do an exercise, but you're worried about prying eyes, you don't have to do that anymore. You can just muck around with it and figure it out. So that's a cool thing to do. Again, please do remember that form is everything. Don't injure yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Um, but it's I get it. I totally get it. Somebody messaged me in the comments the other day and they said, there are so many things I want to try in the gym, but I can't because it's a populated place and I feel like they know more than me. Well, now you don't have to. So if you're struggling with flies or pff, I can't even think, lateral raises, whatever it is, just experiment. Use those light weights. Figure out what works for you and when you know you're in the flow. And hey, look at that. You've just progressed. And number four, on that note, you can experiment with all those weird exercises you never understood and see if they worked for you. Now, I can't imagine there's a lot of this. But again, somebody tweeted me the other day, cheap plug at SimonMeta316, and they wanted to know about Bulgarian split squats because they thought it looked strange and they weren't 100% sure how it all came together. So we had a little bit of a chat. But the cool thing about Bulgarian split squats, all you need is a couple of dumbbells or a couple of weights you can hold in your hands and a table. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but you can do it. And for the record, Bulgarian split squats are great and you should absolutely incorporate them as part of your routine. But yes, if you've never wanted to, or if you always wanted to give it a go, now's your time. Do it in your house. Expand the exercise you do. Expand your gym knowledge. Maybe that's the productive thing you do in your rest sets. You type in, you know, uh, dumbbell exercises, I can do for legs and a whole new world is opened up to you like no one's doing Romanian deadlifts and you can do that with a barbell you can do it with a dumbbell I guess you could kind of do it just standing up probably not going to do a lot but the point is expand your mind number three is you can finally do glute thrusts if you're a guy I don't know why you get judged for doing this Glute thrusts are really good. Going to give you a nice shape, the ass, which will probably help you with your squat. But every time I try and do glute thrusts in the gym, you have somebody looking over at you, just judging away. I see you. I judge. Oh, look at that guy doing glute thrusts. The woman exercise. What is this? 1942. It was bad then and it's bad now. You should be able to do whatever the hell you want. Also, I'm a man that likes to hit every single one of his muscle groups. When it comes to ass, glute thrust. Hell yeah. Number two is there's no need to travel. The irony being is that if you could travel to a gym right now, it'd be really easy because there is no traffic. But sometimes that can be a pain in the ass, right? You're running late or again, there is loads of congestions and you've taken your pre-workout. You're like, I'm not going to get the benefit. So that's great. That's awesome. You don't have to worry about that anymore. No travel. All the travel you need to do is come down from your toilet after you've done whatever you're doing in there and boo howdy, there is your weight. Or maybe you're doing it in your garage. So you get a little bit of vitamin D too as you're walking to your makeshift weight place. And I think that's all right. That's a cool thing. Who wants to drive anyway? And number one is the best. Number one is the best. It means when it comes to cardio, which we all hate, we all know we hate cardio. And if you've got a, uh, a home machine in your house, awesome. But otherwise we're doing card workouts or we're going for runs or we're doing cycling. But you can have sex with your partner and that counts as working out from home. And let me tell you this, not from personal experience, but I'm 99% sure it's true. If you have sex with your partner, in any kind of public space, including a gym, you will be banned and likely arrested. Again, I'm pretty, pretty sure that's against the law. So don't do that. Also, you like expose yourself. So you're going to get done for multiple crimes. But you know, if you want to get like a hit session and you could do some weights, have sex, 
do some weights, and if you've got all the power in the world, you can have sex again. I mean, my word, how you're doing that, I will never know, but a fact is a fact. And there you go, there's some 10 positive things that you can focus on when you are working out from home, but we all know the biggest positive will be when everybody's health and safety is back, and we can return to the gyms, because boy, howdy, am I missing it as well. Uh, but thank you for joining me again. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button, because YouTube loves the like button. And patreon.com forward slash SimonMeta316, because, yeah, I don't make any money from YouTube yet. We will change this around, and when I do, I just won't mention it anymore. And you can be like, wow, Simon did it. But I appreciate you all being here, and I'll see you soon.